This is K.M. Wyland, and you're listening to the 218th episode of the Helping Writers Become Authors podcast. I'm just finishing up my final post-first draft edit of my historical steampunk storming before sending it off to the critters, which means I'm also starting to mull on the next book. This one will be a return to the modern world, but with a time travel twist. I'm still working out lots of the details on this one, and I can sense that I'm going to have to take my usual post-novel break. I've never been able to jump from one book to another. I always need a space of at least a few months to decompress after finishing one novel before I can move on to the next one. So maybe by the first of the year, I'll be able to start outlining. The characteristic moment belongs at the end of your book, too. The latest post in the video series on my blog talks about the little-discussed characteristic moment at the end of your story, which bookends the one at the beginning. To watch it, visit my website at helpingwritersbecomeauthors.com. New videos are posted every Wednesday. And now, I hope you enjoyed this week's podcast entitled, Are You Hiding Behind Your Writing or Using It as a Mirror? Writing, as an act of personal creation, tells us things about ourselves. And that can be scary, because we may not always like what we're reading about ourselves between the lines of our stories. Even scarier, writing will tell others things about ourselves. Every word we write becomes a testimony of ourselves to the world. Putting your heart and soul, your strengths, and your black scabbed weaknesses out there for both family members and strangers to read is dangerous business. No wonder the bare thought of it can induce bone-racking writer's block. Sometimes we can be tempted to try to keep our true selves out of our writing, but this is dangerous business as well. The less of ourselves we put into our writing, the less likely our stories are going to be any good. Five signs you may be hiding behind your writing. One, you're afraid of what people will think of you when they read your story. Even though you may not agree with all of your characters' mindsets or actions, all of those mindsets and actions ultimately originated with you, and people will certainly have an opinion about the kind of person who dreamed them up. Two, you like to use big words so people will think you're smart. Writing is even more of an intellectual pursuit than it is an emotional one. The last thing any of us want readers to think is that we're stupid, so why not pack in a few thousand dollar words to prove them wrong? 3. You're following the trends instead of following your heart. Maybe the story you really want to write is about old people with Alzheimer's, but maybe it's easier and safer to write about vampires because, hey, everybody else is doing it, right? At any rate, it seems like you have a much better chance of getting published if you're following the market. Four, you freeze whenever you have to write an emotional scene. Maybe you want to write about important and honest emotions, but you can't. Every time the story demands that you talk about grief or love or being a parent, your muse clams up on you. Five, You avoid writing the subjects about which you're passionate. We are what we believe. That means that when others find out what we believe, they will certainly judge us, for better or worse, based upon those beliefs. If you never write anything about these subjects, then people can never judge who you really are, right? If any one of those signs sounds familiar, then you probably are protecting yourself from being judged. You're also robbing both yourself and your audience of the wonderful gift of a mirror. In his article, Your Guide to Pain-Free Revision, in the May-June 2013 issue of Writer's Digest, David Corbett wrote, Words are a means to reveal, not something to hide behind. One of the great mistakes of writing is to think of it as a way to impress people in order to escape or obscure our own personal shortcomings. Consider the following ways in which we can stop hiding behind our writing and instead use it as a mirror. 1. Write bravely. Yeah, it's tough. Suck it up and do it anyway. We only get one shot at life, and for a writer, that means writing. So do it like you've got nothing to lose. 
two, write honestly. Sometimes the most difficult thing about being honest with others is first being honest with ourselves. Figure out what you really think about your character's actions and your story, and then write from the bottom of your soul. Three, pretend no one else will read what you're writing. Sometimes the easiest way to kill the fear is to tell yourself you're the only one who's ever going to read what you're writing. If you finish the story and decide sharing it would be too painful, then that's as far as it needs to go. But once you've got it all on paper, you may find that you have the courage to share it after all. Four, ask yourself why you're so worried about what people think. Acknowledging that you care about what people think of you and your writing isn't enough. You have to dig down deeper and figure out why you care so much. When you get right down to it, you may discover that the motives behind your fears really aren't so convincing after all. Five, accept your weaknesses, writing and personal, and work to improve them. Whether it's personal revelations or writing weaknesses that you're afraid of showing to the world, always remember that these things can be fixed. If you don't like what your stories are telling you about yourself, then use what you're seeing in the mirror of your story to identify your weaknesses and start working toward strength instead. The great thing about a mirror is that it can reflect more than one person's face. If we're honest in our writing, we leave readers no choice but to be honest right back. There's no greater gift we can give a reader than the glimpse of ourselves that will prompt them to look deeper into their own workings. Thank you for listening to the Wordplay Podcast. To read a transcript of this episode, you can visit my website at helpingwritersbecomeauthors.com. And be sure to check back again next week.